Hello and welcome to this video about the identity matrix. A reminder that if you click in the video's description, you can find some exam questions about this topic. In order to understand the term identity matrix, we're going to forget about matrices for a moment and just consider some normal numbers. Notice how 5 times 1 gives you 5, and 6 times 1 gives you 6. In fact, it could be any number a times 1 will just give you a. So the number you started with, 5, 6 or a, is the number you ended with, 5, 6 or a. Due to this property of the number 1, we call the number 1 an identity element, for multiplication, because it keeps the number identical, it remains unchanged. Is there an identity element for addition? Well if we started with 5, 6 and a but rather than multiplying, then we added, and we wanted to end up with an identical number, so 5, 6 or a, what would you need to add? Well it's fairly obvious that this is 0. So 0 is an identity element for addition because it keeps the number unchanged. Now what does this mean for matrices? Well if we started with a matrix, like this one, 4, 2, 1, 3, and we multiplied it by another matrix, but we ended up with the same result, 4, 2, 1, 3, then this matrix here must be an identity element, and we call it the identity matrix. Now can we work out this matrix? Let's just give it general letters A, B, C and D. And let's multiply. So if we were to multiply, we'd do 4, 2 times AC, which would give us 4A plus 2C, and this must equal the top left element, so 4. Then we would do 4, 2 with BD, so 4B plus 2D, and this equals the top right element, 2. Then we would do 1, 3 with AC, so that's A plus 3C, and this must equal the bottom left element, 1. And finally, 1, 3 with BD, so we get B plus 3D must equal the final element, 3. What we have here is two sets of simultaneous equations. We can solve these, we'll do the left ones first. If we multiply the top equation by 4, it becomes 4A plus 12C equals 4, and then subtract the equations, 4A take 4A is 0, 12C take 2C is 10C, and 4 take 4 is 0. So we've got 10C equals 0, in which case C equals 0. If we substitute this back in, I'm going to go for the bottom equation. 4a plus 2c is 4, but we now know that c is 0, so we end up with 4a equals 4, in which case a equals 1. We can do a similar thing with the right set of equations. Again, we'll times the top one by 4, and then subtract the equations. 4b take 4b is 0, 12d take 2d is 10d, and 12 take 2 is 10. So 10d equals 10, in which case d equals 1. If we substitute again into the bottom equation, we know d equals 1 now, so it's 4b plus 2d, but d was 1, so that's just 2, so we end up with 4b plus 2 equals 2. If we subtract 2 from both sides, 4b equals 0, and then b equals 0. So we found that a equals 1, b equals 0, c equals 0, and d equals 1. So we can replace those now in the matrix. 1, 0, 0. 1. And this is known as the identity matrix for multiplication. We always denote the identity matrix with the capital letter I. In the specification it says you need to understand that AI equals IA equals A. Let's try and understand what this means. So if we take a matrix A, I'm going to go for 3, negative 1, 2, 7, then if we do AI, we start with A, and we multiply it by i, remember i is the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now if we do this multiplication, we have 3, negative 1 with 1, 0, so that's 3 times 1 is 3, and negative 1 times 0 is 0, so that just gives us 3. Then we do 3, negative 1 with 0, 1, 3 times 0 is 0, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, so we get negative 1. Then 2, 7 with 1, 0, so 2 times 1 is 2, 7 times 0 is 0, so we've just got 2. And finally, 2, 7 with 0, 1. 2 times 0 is 0, and 7 times 1 is 7. Notice that the result we end up with is just our matrix A. So whenever you do A times the identity, you get A back. Now what if we do it in a different order? What if we do IA? So we start with the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then we multiply it by our matrix, 3, negative 1, 2, 7. So we have 1, 0 with 3, 2, 
So 1 times 3 is 3, and 0 times 2 is 0, so we end up with 3. Then 1, 0 with negative 1, 7. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and 0 times 7 is 0, so we get negative 1. 0, 1 with 3, 2. 0 times 3 is 0, and 1 times 2 is 2. And finally, 0, 1 with negative 1, 7. 0 times negative 1 is 0, and 1 times 7 is 7. So once again, we end up with the same matrix A. So if you do a matrix times by the identity, you'll get the same matrix back. And if you do the identity times by A matrix, you'll get the same matrix back. So capital I is the identity matrix. Well, what would 3i be? This would just be 3 times the identity matrix. We learned in the matrix multiplication video that to do this, you just times all of the elements by 3. So 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 times 0, which is 0. 3 times 0 again, which is 0. And 3 times 1, which is 3. Notice for the identity matrix, we have 1s on the diagonal here, and then zeros for the rest. Well, when you have 3i, you have 3s on the diagonal, and zeros for the rest. In fact, if you take a general number, let's say k, so ki would have k's on the diagonal, and zeros for the rest. So you can immediately write down any matrix like this. Perhaps 432i would just be 432s on the diagonal, and zeros for the rest. Now let's have a look at an exam question using the identity matrix. So we're given two matrices, M and N, and we're told the fact that MN equals KI, and we need to find K, A, and B. So given the fact MN equals KI, let's work out MN. So MN is just the matrix M times the matrix N. And we can do this. So we'll start with 4, 8, and 2, 1. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 1 is also 8, so 8 and 8 makes 16. Then we'll do 4, 8 with A, B. So 4 times A is 4A. 8 times B is 8B. So we've got 4A plus 8B. Then negative 2, 4 with 2, 1. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. But 4 times 1 is positive 4. And negative 4 and positive 4 just gives you 0. And finally, negative 2, 4 with A, B. Negative 2 times A is negative 2A. And 4 times B is 4B. So it's negative 2a plus 4b. Now what about the matrix ki? Well, we saw previously that ki is just k's on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So we have the matrix mn and the matrix ki, and we're told they're equal. So let's set them equal to each other. If we now compare elements, we can start to work out these letters. If you look at the top left elements, we have 16 and k. This must mean that k equals 16. If we look at the top right elements, 4a plus 8b must equal 0. So let's write that down, 4a plus 8b equals 0. If you look at the bottom left elements, it just says 0 equals 0, so that's not too helpful. And bottom right, we've got negative 2a plus 4b equals k. But remember we now know k, k is 16. So negative 2a plus 4b equals 16. So we were asked to find k, a, and b. We found k, so we just need to find a and b. Fortunately, we've got some simultaneous equations here. If we take the second equation and double it, so negative 2a becomes negative 4a, 4b becomes 8b, and 16 becomes 32, then we can add the equations together. 4a add negative 4a is 0, 8b add 8b is 16b, and 0 add 32 is 32. If you solve this, you get b equals 2. And then if we substitute back into the first equation, we now know that b is 2, so it's 4a plus 8 lots of 2, which is 16, equals 0, in which case 4a equals negative 16, and then a equals negative 4. So we've now finished the question because we found k, a, and b. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Remember there are exam questions now for you to try in the description. Check out what I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.